Welcome to Bike Week Radio Show. Powered by Geico. 15 minutes can save you 15% or more on motorcycle insurance. Bike Week Radio Show with Bobby Woldridge, Brock Glover, and Paul Carruthers on San Diego's sports leader, the mighty 1090. Good morning and welcome into Bike Week Radio Show on San Diego Sports Leader, the Mighty 1090. Thank you guys again for making Bike Week Radio part of your Sunday morning routine. And once again, the whole cast and crew is back in studio. So fantastic to have everybody here. Brock Glover, back from Vegas. Looking like a little bit, uh, those pockets are weighing down a little bit heavier after he uh, took the blackjack tables for all they were worth. Brock, sir, good morning. I just followed your technique, buddy. Doubling down every time. Splitting the aces. Doing the whole thing, Bobby. You taught me well, man. And he's really happy Greyhound is still in service. Exactly. <laughs> Actually, I, I I was super lucky. There was somebody that was leaving and was able to catch a ride. But my car's, uh, hopefully I'll get that car out of Hawk. <laughs> I saw it on TV on uh, uh, Pawn Stars last there. night. Yeah. yeah, your technique didn't work. I lost my shorts. <laughs> Did go in commando this morning. Well, Thank goodness it's radio, not TV. Brock Lover, ladies and gentlemen. Also back from New York, Paul Carruthers. How you doing, buddy? Uh, I'm doing well. My pockets are way, way lighter <laughs> after four days in New York. But we had uh, we had a great time. It's a it's a cool city. I've never got a chance to spend any time there as like a tourist. So we did all the uh, the touristy things, and we kind of we went from morning till night for four straight days, and we had a really good time. And, and, and he, had a, he did a guest slot on the Today Show. I that's understand. true. Yeah, I was in New York for about an hour, and I managed to get my face there on the uh, on the TV, so I got a screenshot of that. Now, here's what kind of team player Paul Carruthers is. He gets national TV exposure. I know Scott would have been wearing his Bike Week Radio shirt. I know I would have been wearing my shirt. Brock would have been wearing a Bike Week Radio Show T-shirt to get the word out. Paul? I screwed that up. I yeah. guess. Add it to the list. <laughs> Did you even wear a Chargers hat or anything? No, I just was just dressed like regular guy. Oh. I didn't. I wasn't expecting to be on that. Speaking, of, me on speaking of observation, did you guys like? I had to go out and do a little bit of shopping yesterday. And I mean, the San Diego just when the Chargers are doing good, you can't even, as they say, swing a dead cat without hitting somebody wearing a powder blue jersey They're or everywhere. a Charger hat everywhere. They lose a couple games in a row. Flags on vehicles. Stuff's back in the closet. It's all back in their closet. <laughs> it's still in the dirty laundry, I think. Well, they'll come back out. It's, yeah. I think things are going to turn around here real I, quick. And I didn't see any much of anything yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> also here, Scott Cox, who is updating that Bike Week Radio Show Facebook page today. And uh, how are we doing, Scott? Doing awesome. I like it here when we're all in studio. I, I, you know what? The energy's different. We've got the it's, kumbaya uh, going. Exactly. It's, it's a lot more fun. And we have a very nice show lined up for you guys today. We have Brock Davidson from Brock's Performance. No relation to Brock Lover is what I'm told. Well, you don't know that for sure. <laughs> well, he definitely spells his name wrong. <laughs> we have B-R-O-C, and uh, Brock Davidson is the one-upper with B-R-O-C-K. Yeah. Brock Davidson. I've had my name spelled that way. If you, I, bet, million, I bet more million, than million this morning. <laughs> I'm looking at Bobby's notes. That's a good story about that. You got a second? <laughs> no? Okay. About your name? <laughs> no, the K name. The K man. <laughs> the K man name. Come on now. Well, back years and million years ago when you find sign your contract, you know, your you first thing you got know, you, you know, you gotta have it set up a corporation to help you, you know, the taxes. I mean taxes were much higher back then and so I went down and applied for a corporation in the state of California and tried you know, I don't remember. Golden State Corporation, you know, which was obviously didn't take in a million times. Tried about four or five names, and every one of them get, kept getting shut down. We always had kind of a joke every time my name showed up in print somewhere with Brock with a K on it. There was always somebody in the house would circle it and say, the K-Man got you again, you know. And so, I mean, literally, Cycle News would show up, and I'm sure Paul wasn't the one writing it back then because he would know better. <laughs> it would have Brock with a K in it, and someone would circle it. The result sheet, you know, you'd be back. Oh, did I make the result sheet from the CMC race at Saddleback last week? Well, you didn't, but Brock with a K did. Yeah, but no, Brock with a K you. did. Yeah, exactly. So they would always get circled, and I think my family, my entire family, was on a mission just to rub that in my face. So finally, when I was down getting the corporation name, it just got... This is ridiculous. When object, you know, we've been uh, rejected about six times for different names, and finally someone just said, just put K-Man down there. I'm like, what? The K-Man Corporation. And I said, okay. So I put <laughs> K-Man Corporation almost as a joke, and it went right through. 
And then, oh, about, I don't know. Based out of the Cayman Islands. Yeah, no, nice. the Cayman Islands weren't the tax haven then. Oh, about a year or two later, it became a big so Brock tax got haven there. in the Cayman Islands, which is obviously spelled with a C, different in spelling completely, but, boy, that was a corporation name that was kind of short-lived. I didn't think uh, didn't having a, stick with that. The Cayman. Yeah, the Cayman Corporation from Cayman Islands, no thanks. Is that when you change it to six-timer, Pink? <laughs> no, I just changed it to six timer. <laughs> one of Paul. I wish I was Paul Corporation. Well, that was taken. Yes, <laughs> by well, Paul. Hey, actually, Kel. Kel Carruthers could be came in. Yeah, he could. Yeah, he would. There you go. Well, well that what, was a long story. what better way to uh, throw it to Paul Carruthers and his news? Nobody knows the news better than Bike Week Radio Show. This was an age when only men were allowed to read the news. And only Bike Week Radio Show has the editor of Cycle News. And in San Diego, one anchor man was more man than the rest. And now, here's the editor of Cycle News, Paul Carruthers. Yeah, I'm here. We can do the news now. Don't lie, everyone. That little uh, lead in can be changed here. Everyone, why well, you, you never know. Now? Let's go. <laughs> Yeah, I almost had the uh, Pavlovian slip there where, you know, you just repetition, repetition. And uh, I was like, and the editor of Cycle News, Paul Carruthers. Well, I still am. Okay, I can do it for Technically, one still more is, week. It this was is, good today. It, yeah, you can do it until, uh, well, till, till today. And you know what? It's news. There it is. Paul's news is about Paul's news. Did you what? write your own newsletter saying... That's no, I, I didn't actually have to do that. Yeah, run us down. I actually read it. No, you did? did? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, well, I, might, I might have edited it a little. Well, it sounded you know, a little, pretty impressive of uh, your resume, and so that's why I was like, well, Paul sounds like he embellished here. That's yeah, why I didn't believe it. That's why I assumed he's someone else. You know, I don't mean to plug another, so, but you know, sometimes Racer X has like thumbs up, thumbs down, or thumbs sideways, like what things are trending, basically. And they actually had Cycle News had, had two thumbs up. They it was, did? Yeah, it's trending up. I didn't see that. Yeah, yeah. said new editor, new thing, should be awesome, double thumbs up. Yeah, those bastards. Oh, <laughs> and, he belie- and he believes uh, me. Oh, man, you're getting gullible besides. Anyhow. So if you don't know what we're talking about, Paul's last Monday. This is your last issue, huh, buddy? Psycho yeah, news. I'm working on my last issue now. Um, it'll Th- be my last. 30 years, buddy. Almost 30 years, and I've taken another job. I think you guys discussed it a little bit last yeah. week with uh, with Moto America, and it's, it's, um, it's, it's exciting, but it's also sad. I mean, to be somewhere almost 30 years and, and develop the relationships there and, and the people I've worked with over those 30 years, it's, uh, it's going to be a sad day when I, when I leave there on Friday and not come back. But um, I'm really happy that, uh, that Kit Palmer has decided to take the position. Uh, Kit's been there. He, he was actually there a year before I started. So he's been there longer than I have, and, and we've worked together all those years, and, and I think Kit's going to do a great job. He's... Uh, He's definitely qualified, and he knows where all the skeletons are buried and uh, can dig the stuff up, and, and we've just got to try to get him some help. Um, he has Andrea Wilson there now, but at, at, when I walk out, it's just going to be the two of them, and we're trying now to get him some, some help. So what you're saying, if any good Bike Week radio listeners are out there looking for a good job well, I'm and serious. no motorcycle yeah, well, a lot of our if, listeners do. If there's interest in being a uh, – in, ha- in taking a really good job, because being a moto journalist is, is not a bad thing to do. You know, you get to test bikes, you get to write stories, you get to go to races, you get to do all that all that good stuff. I'm not saying it's not a lot of work, because it is, but uh, there's a good opportunity for somebody at Cycle News, if, if they're qualified and they want to take a shot at it, they'd, uh, they can get in touch with me for another week, and they can get in touch with Kit beyond that. But uh, well, well, Kit, I mean, I'm going to personally miss... I mean, I love when the readers. I always that's one of the first sections I go to. So when the readers write in and they say something, there's always one. There's always one issue. You know, Paul will throw his, as I know you so well, his form of humor in there. <laughs> Half the time, the listeners don't quite get it, but I always no. Do. I, I and you great. know, I you're a little. Rebuffed. I try. I do that every once in a while. I could do it all the time, but I mean, there's times when my tongue's bleeding. I'm biting it so hard, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I you know I. Uh, don't say that. My wife will want you to teach me that method. I've been the uh, I've been the editor there for a long time, and part of the reason is that you know I I kind of know when to hold back and when not to, so I kind of release those little zingers every once in a while. But I can't do it all the time. Yeah, they're fun. But anyway, it's going to be. Uh, I'm looking forward to the new job. It's going to be a big job, a big challenge, and I'm looking forward to working with Rain Rainey and uh, Chuck Axelin and the rest of that. Crazy so technically, group. the name of the new company and in, in your new title. Uh, communications uh, manager uh, for Moto America, Moto which is America. The, the new road race championship that's taken over from the DMG series. And, yeah, we I mean, there's obviously, we're, it's a startup, so we're basically starting from, from zero. And those guys have been in business, I think, about five weeks at this point since they got the deal signed. 
And we have our first race in April. And uh, and, we'll, and it will be at what track? At Circuit of the Americas oh. in Texas. It will be held in conjunction with MotoGP, wow. which I think is a nice place to start because mm-hmm. you've kind of got a lot of things built in there, including a rather large crowd, and the television will be all in place and all that stuff. So we've got a, we've got a ton of work to do. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be fun. It's I'm looking forward to just getting in there and rolling my sleeves up and getting some work done. And it's going to be fun working with Chuck and Wayne and the rest of those guys there. Because and you'll be able to feed us some world class guests. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, yeah, it won't be hard for me to twist a few arms and get whatever guests we need on here. So that's uh, and is, and 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 you guys have been nice enough to say that you would like me to still stick around. Even well, did we do? I thought we were going to have a group decision about that. Didn't well, we, we haven't. Made that made, that I made the decision. Uh, okay, all yeah, right. Scott did but make the decision. There's three of us. <laughs> it's a democratic system here. Yeah. <laughs> Bobby. Well, just let me know before I start driving next week. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll allow it then. Just check your text. Anyhow, right. let's get on with the real news here, and uh, there's not a lot of it. Um, we had the Malaysian Grand Prix, which was held in Sepang. Uh, it was 1 o'clock in the morning um, our time here in California, and I tried to stay up, but I think I had one too many glasses of wine or something, and it was like I started to fade at about 10 o'clock, so... I woke up early this morning, and, and it was well worth um, getting up early for because, once again, MotoGP provided a hell of a show. Uh, this one was a battle between Valentino Rossi and Mark Marquez that basically went the distance. Uh, Rossi did most of the leading after getting past uh, his teammate, Jorge Lorenzo. Um, Marquez just kind of sat there, but um, once he did get past Rossi, it's not like he pulled away. Uh, finally, in the, in the closing stages there, you could tell Rossi sort of threw in the towel. Uh, that was Marquez's 12th victory of the season, which matches Mick Dewan's uh, record. In two weeks, they go to the final round of the series, which is a home race for Mark Marquez in Valencia, Spain. At that point in time, if he wins, it'll obviously be his 13th win uh, of the season, which will break that record. Uh, in fairness to Mick Dewan, I think he did it in a shorter season. I think he did it in 14 or 15 rounds where Marquez has had 17. So if you're a Bobby kind of guy, meaning a gambling man, would you be betting on that record being broken? Uh, I think it would be hard to bet against that, although yeah. obviously Jorge Lorenzo is going to be pretty fired up to win that race as yeah, well. His whole uh, country. Yeah, they're both. And then Danny Pedrosa is also, I, mean, I thought he was going to be a bigger factor than he was today, but he, he ended up crashing out of the race. Uh, he was battling for the lead and crashed out. Crashed twice. Yeah, and he got back up and sort of walked to his bike. He wasn't in much of a hurry. And uh, then realized the bike was okay, and he continued. And he actually was back up into the points, like in 10th place, and he yeah. crashed again. And at that point, I think he said enough's enough. So uh, those guys will go at it again in Spain in, in, in two weeks. Nicky Hayden, unfortunately, crashed out of 10th place today. Um, it, it appeared that he was fine. And, you know, every time he crashes now, you kind of worry that he's going to bang that wrist um, and, and do further injury. But it didn't look like that was the case. He the, looked really big, by the way. What do you mean? Well, and the guys righted his motorcycle, and they were going to make a decision. You know, he's walking along, like, am I going to get back on? And they're pushing him. And it's like he was a head higher than the than the truck. All the corner yeah. workers were yeah. on the uh, Just an interesting observation. Short well, side. It didn't catch me right away. That's Nicky because he seemed like he was Valentino yeah, Rossi well, tall. Well, and he's not tall. So he's that just shows you how short friend. the corner workers were. Right. <laughs> So the big battle in that one, obviously, with uh, with Marquez already wrapping up the, his second world championship, was the battle for second in the point standings. Rossi helped himself today, and he now leads uh, his teammate, Jorge Lorenzo, by 12 points. So that's going to be decided at that final round. And uh, Pedrosa was also in that battle for second, but uh, obviously his crash out today um, pretty much put an end to that. The Moto2 world championship was won today by Tito Rabat. Uh, he's pretty much been leading the thing the entire season, and he wrapped it up with uh, with one round remaining. Now the Moto Three World Championship that's going to go down to the to the bitter end as well, and that that's that's an interesting series, obviously because um, Alex Marquez, who's Mark Marquez's younger brother, uh, he could take the title. He's actually winning the championship now by 11 points, and that would make um, two brothers winning world championships in one season, which is unheard of. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Like the Hayden days and the Bostrom days, but this is even a world, this is a well, much yeah. higher level stage, obviously. Right, and I'm not sure that those guys ever won in the same year either, so it's going to be something cool. special. But um, it's being that it's Moto3, like today the top six were separated by a second. So you could go into that thing leading by 11 and not win that world championship. And Jack Miller led most of the season. He's the Australian kid that's actually making the move directly from Moto3 to MotoGP next year because – Obviously, everybody believes that he's got the talent to do so. So it's going to be interesting. Um, you know, uh, 
young Marquez could either be a hero in, at his home race or, or a real zero, so we'll have to see what happens. But anyway, um, Miller finished second today, and uh, Marquez was fifth, so it closed up to 11 points, and then in two weeks we'll get that decided and uh, see where it goes. So, but. so how, how does, I mean, the season started off, we are talking about a perfect season for Marquez, and all of a sudden now the competitors caught up, or did the other guys, did Marquez just making mistakes and come back down to earth? I mean, you tell me, what's your observation? I think what I think what happened is I think early in the season, or all, almost all the way through the season, except for maybe the last five or six races, I think the Honda was a better motorcycle. Yeah. And I think that I think the Yamaha has made some progress so that there's not as big a gap. Um, I still think Marquez at this point is the fastest rider, but I also think he's shown that he has an ability to make some mistakes, which at 22 years old... Yeah, so you're talking about a lot of crashes. I know last last year the was the Australian round. They had a lot of tire issues. So Bridgestone, the tire manufacturer. I mean, it's because it's a spec tire, they're just trying to make a tire that's it's not. They're just trying to make a tire that's even, fair, and makes the racing good. They overshot it a little bit last last round where they maybe made a compound a little too hard. People were saying you got to. It's a right. slippery. So did did they have? I mean, you have Nikki crashing, you, had, you know, um, Marquez crashing, or uh, Lorenzo crash, or uh, shoot, it was Marquez. Uh, uh, yeah. So yeah. Al crashed low. No, who and who all else crashed? But it was uh, Danny Pedrosa crashed twice. So you have these guys crashing. You know, are they used to a little softer tire, and then all of a sudden now they come into a corner and it's like, whoops, the thing. You know, I mean. Well, I think in Australia the the problem is that the, the track is so fast and it requires a tire that's. Hard enough to go the distance, right? It, because last year, it's like happened, Daytona is almost well, right. Over last here. year they had to shorten the race because the tires weren't going to make it, and then we had that whole debacle with right. Marquez missing the time that he was supposed to come in and getting disqualified. Exactly. But um, this year they came up with a tire. I guess it was like a dual compound front, which mm-hmm. they don't usually use. And the problem there was apparently is when they slowed, when they backed off the pace a little bit, the tire. Cool too cool much. Too much and got so, slippery again. So, in other words, when they eased off, it was the worst thing they could do. As long as they were hammering the thing and keeping the heat in it, then they didn't fall down. But that's why you saw some accidents there last uh, last week in Australia. Was Marquez crashed and apparently he 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 was going actually slower in the corner than he'd gone the previous lap. And the same with Cal Crutchlow. And you're talking about millis. I mean, yeah, a, I mean, it's a couple it's, of K at the most. Yeah, it's know, not but, much, but yeah. it's it obviously. You know, it shows what, how how on the edge those guys are on those tires, and they're using everything mm-hmm. those tires can have. But I think, um, you know, Marquez obviously started crashing a little bit here in the end. And it was funny because, like you said, early in the season, we were like, oh, can this guy have a perfect season? And it was – I actually did a story with Wayne Rainey where Wayne said, you know, I don't think that's going to happen because there's so many things that can play into this. And doing a perfect season is really difficult, and as, as it turns out, he was right because – you know, the kid had a couple of crashes and things like that. So, but I think it's they're a lot closer than they are yeah, than the they Yamaha's, were in the beginning. Yamaha's improved and everything. So exactly. Yeah, so. so I think it's it's. I so mean, it's, tires weren't an issue this last. It's, it's, no, the it's tires weren't a problem this last one. It's just Phillip Island produces that. It, like you said, it's like a Daytona type Malaysia, thing. But the Malaysians, Malaysians, everything seemed fine. Okay, sounds good. And then we have the last GNCC race today. Last GNCC and um, Alex Salvini coming over yeah. riding the. Yeah. Uh, Right the world enduro yeah, championship wor- guy, world and, uh, yeah, world champion enduro rider coming over here from uh, Europe, Italy, and uh, he's going to race for. He's going to ride the the uh, JCR Rockstar Honda, which is cool because yeah. obviously Johnny oh, Campbell's Johnny well, Campbell's uh, team's based right up the street here in, in San Clemente. Paul passes it on the way home. But and again, I think that's you know I think that's what's cool about when your series is actually good enough to attract Europeans and stuff to come over, and that's one of the things that the AMA Superbike Series used to have, if you think about it, like Troy Corser and Anthony Gobert and Matt Maladin, they'd mm-hmm. come here and, and realize that if they had good results here, they could go to World Championship. And that's pretty much gone away. So that's one of Wayne's goals with Moto America is to make it so it's strong enough again so that you can have these guys. And GNCC is obviously to the point where it's a, a championship that's highly regarded around the world. And, and there have been some really fast Europeans over oh, the years. Yeah. I mean, David, Shane Watts, David, exactly. Knight, David, yeah, David Knight, Knight no Juha one. Salmanen. Yep. In fact, Taddy, I want to say Taddy ran some of those yeah, races. Yeah, I mean, you've too. had multiple world enduro champions come over and compete in this series, if not for... 
you know, a guest ride or two, but they, for the yeah. whole entire series or two. You know, so. It's just like Supercross yeah. and Motocross here. Yeah. It just adds so much when you get guys from other countries that want to come race here because yeah. it shows. And you want the flow to go both ways. Right. And even now we've got Villapoto going over to Europe, which is, it hasn't been done in years when you take a top American rider in Motocross and, and have him go over there and stay over there and run it. So it's really, uh, yeah, it's great. And I hope, it, I hope all the success for you guys in the uh, Moto America series. It's exciting and, racing, too. Yeah, and I, I was going to ask you, actually, because I wasn't here last week. I don't know if you talked about the Villapoto thing or not, but you 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 actually did a little bit of Grand Prix racing. Is he? How do you think he's going to find it? I mean, for me, it was just a combination of a lot of things, and uh, we've talked about it. It was, it was um, you know, I, I, I saw the John Penton movie, and I was actually, by the time I walked out of there, I was like, boy, oh, boy, that thing ended right when... If there was anybody from America that was in the middle of that thing that maybe didn't get talked about, I was over there during the whole entire time when the uh, the original um, owners of KTM, the founders of KTM, uh, Soulhammer, and and then the group that were founded the KTM brand were basically giving it up to become a corporation. And at that point, literally, the government of Austria had come in and taken it over financially. Like in receivership. And um, I was you know, sharing hotel rooms of all crazy things with the, the guy who was the government official that came to and, and, and looked at the book. So it was an interesting time for the brand of KTM. It was certainly not where it is today. There was a lot of other things that happened during that, that season that probably affected my results, but it's a lot more difficult, as we've noticed with the Motocross Nation teams that have been going over there now than it used to be. And uh, it, it's it's going to be a challenge for Villapoto. He's got all the right teammates and, and uh, infrastructure in place to do good. Um, hopefully he just spends a lot of time at tracks like Lommel and those places to learn the circuits. But uh, we're all anxiously on the edge of our seats waiting for that first Grand Prix. Well, joining us on the hotline next, I see him already waiting for us, Brock Davidson from Brock's Performance. With a K. With a K. Uh, the the uh, Brock'sPerformance.com if you want to check out the website. And uh, we're going to get to Brock here in just a second on the other side here. But right now, once again, one of those helpful writing hints from our good friends at Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys. Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys have been representing riders for decades. And here's Chuck Coro from Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys to provide you with a helpful writing hint. If you are intending to get a motorcycle license, your best bet is to go to the motorcycle safety schools. That way, you can take your driving test as part of the instruction program and not have to take it at the DMV. Remember, if you only have a permit, you cannot carry passengers, you cannot ride on the freeway, and you cannot drive at night. This helpful hint has been brought to you by Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys at 1-800-4-BIKERS or online at russbrown.com. Here's an idea. Bear with me. You could save quite a bit of money just by switching your motorcycle insurance to GEICO. Piles of it, in fact. But there may not be a lot of room on your bike for all that extra cash. So I had somewhat of an idea. You could get one of those nifty little sidecars, pile it up with all that money you just saved, and merrily drive on your way. It's just a thought. Just off the top of my head. Call GEICO today for a free motorcycle rate quote. GEICO, saving people money on more than just car insurance. Hi, James here from Toyota Escondido. Guys, if you're hearing this commercial, that means you are into powerful machines that go fast and are durable. Toyota Escondido has the biggest selection in San Diego of Toyota Tacomas and Toyota Tundras. Whether for work or play, we can customize the truck of your choice into the truck of your dreams. Don't waste time anywhere else. Stop by or give us a call. Toyota Escondido. Freeway close where Highway 78 meets Broadway, just east of the 15. Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys are the real deal. Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys. Their entire practice is dedicated to representing motorcyclists. As riders themselves, they understand why you ride, the issues you face, and the motorcycle culture. For over 30 years, Russ Brown and his partner Chuck Coro have been helping injured motorcyclists and their families get the care and compensation they deserve. Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys also created BAM. BAM. 
a nationwide buddy system of over 2 million riders helping riders in the event of a roadside emergency. BAM offers free legal advice, and thanks to Russ Brown, they have staff on hand to take your call 24-7, 365 days a year. Imagine a real person answering the phone 24-7. Just call 1-800-4-BIKERS for more information and to get your BAM card today. If you go down, call Russ Brown, 1-800-4-BIKERS, and online at russbrown.com. You're listening to Bike Week Radio Show with Bobby Woldridge, Brock Glover, and Paul Carruthers on San Diego's sports leader, the mighty 1090. Welcome back. Bike Week Radio Show, San Diego sports leader, mighty 1090. If you missed any of the show, check out the podcast at bikeweekradioshow.com. Also on iTunes. And also, best way to stay in contact with the show is through Bike Week Radio Show's Facebook page. And join that Bike Week Radio Show mailing list because we're always sending out updates and cool projects and rides we're a part of and things we're going to be out at. And one of those is uh, at uh, 945, we'll be talking to Kim Kohlenberger. And she's one of the uh, uh, the people putting together the Injured Warrior Appreciation Project or I War, War Ride. Really cool. You start in Orange County, Harley-Davidson in, in Irvine, sort of over in uh, Paul's neck of the woods. Over right, by him. Freeway. And then you, you ride into Camp Pendleton, which is very unique. You, you don't get to do that very often is ride through uh, Camp Pendleton. So uh, you, Not often unless you're a Marine. <laughs> yeah, and so uh, if you're a civilian like uh, like us here in studio, it, it's a very cool uh, thing to, to get that opportunity. And so we'll talk to Kim about that coming up next. But right now, let's head out to the hotline where Brock Davidson from Brock's Performance joins us. Brock, good morning. Good morning. Thank you again for joining us. Where are you calling us from, Brock? I'm calling you from lovely Dayton, Ohio. Mm, Dayton, Ohio. Lovely this time of year. Based on the photos on your Facebook page, it is quite lovely there, isn't it, guys? Uh, it, it's, uh, <laughs> we've got some cornfields, and you know we don't we may not have the west coast uh, the west coast look, but we've got you know beautiful trees. It's it's nice around here. I've been here most of my life, but uh, the weather's getting ready to turn, getting a little chilly outside, so not too bad. It's nice. Yeah, actually, uh, I was talking to a buddy of mine this morning. It's over. Uh, he's a little bit uh, northeast of you, a little bit, but they're setting up a mini bike track. Oh, our friend Rob Bidos, good friend of the of the show, calls in a lot. Does a lot of announcing at the Supercross races, motocross races, all around good guy. And he's out laying out a mini bike track right now at a uh, campground. That uh, there you go. Yeah, like fun. Yeah, he's got a bunch of pictures posted on his uh, Facebook page, and, and uh, he's setting it out with a bunch of old motocross guys and. This gal, when she shuts down her shuts down her campground for the for the winter in early October, she allows them to set up a mini bike track. And Brock might right. have a like maybe 100, 150 horsepower mini bike. You you could take over there and run with the guys, huh, Brock? Exactly. <laughs> Carbon wheels <laughs> and uh, bikes are popular around here, believe it or not. Yeah, that's true. So yeah, you're not far from the old. Uh, we used to come in the old Kenworthy's uh, National Track in oh, yeah. Troy, Ohio. There, so. So what's new on uh, what's new on your books there? I mean, you're you're famous for everything from high performance land speed record bikes to drag bikes. I mean, you guys just build it all. Yeah, I mean, we specialize in. Oh, uh, well, in the past, I, I could sum it up pretty e- easily in drag race um, performance parts for guys who drag race their street bikes. But lately, um, we've we've sort of broadened our horizons over the last five years or so and gotten into you know carbon fiber wheels uh, those, those are those are getting very popular um, for obviously for guys who turn we just uh, well Jeremy toy he's from from your area yep. uh, he used uh, our carbon fiber wheels to just win uh, Pikes Peak here not too long ago so uh, we've seen uh, we've seen quite a we've seen quite a resurgence or not resurgence but increase in uh, in that type of performance, um, motorcycle exhaust systems, you know, we've, we we uh, that's a lot of our business also. And uh, also we've gone into V-twins. I mean, we've got a, a pretty wide horizon here, but it's all around better performance for your motorcycle. When you talk about carbon wheels, I mean, how much lighter is a one of your sets of carbon wheels uh, than a standard stock wheel? Well, that's sort of a loaded question because it would depend on, which bike we're talking about some some bikes it may only be a couple pounds other bikes you may get there may be seven or eight pounds but it's not necessarily the fact that they are lighter it's where they're lighter and yeah and it, uh, the way 
the weight removal of a carbon fiber wheel uh, is mostly in the rim and spoke area furthest away from the hub. So what you have is a, uh, a decrease in your, in your moments of, moment of inertia. So the bike, um, it, it, it handles better if, uh, in, you know, in, in simple terms, the, the flickability of the bike is better. So racers like them because at the end of a, let's say, uh, you know, a 20-minute heat race, they've had to put less effort into getting the bike to turn to the left and to the right, you know, back and forth. Um, you know, it's the bike becomes less fatiguing to ride. And plus, it excel- I mean, yeah, you're talking to I mean, my job, full-time job, I'm a tire guy in dirt bike. I mean, we take a pound out of a motocross tire at a professional supercross level, and believe me, the riders definitely feel it. They know they just what you're talking about, the flickability and little quick turns. Um, you know, how the bike reacts, even in the whoops and the corners, it, it makes a big difference. So you're taking two or three pounds out of the outer circumference of a wheel. It's, uh, it's got to help acceleration, too, huh? It does. And, you know, from our, our drag race customers, acceleration is what it's all about. You know, the bike becomes, uh, it becomes quicker, easier to, uh, easier to accelerate. The land speed guys, it also makes the bike uh, easier to stop. And, you know, from a, from an unsprung weight standpoint, uh, you know, you uh, for the road race guys, you get better traction, better traction out of corners, uh, and just for the street bike guys, you get a better. There's a better quality of ride, uh, you know. And I and I tell guys that you know you sort of think about the old analogy: if you put your ear to a train track and go a mile down the track, bang on that, bang on it, you're gonna you're gonna hear that bang. If that, if that track were made of carbon fiber, you wouldn't hear it. And it's the same thing that happens with these carbon fiber wheels. You just don't, you don't get as much road noise being transferred from the, from the surface of the road up through the chassis like you would when, if you used a metal wheel. Now that's an interesting point. I, you know, a lot of people don't, you don't think about that kind of stuff, but it uh, makes a big difference. Brock, we ran into each other over at the Intermont show in Germany a couple of weeks ago, and I would say one of the one of the marquee uh, displays there was the new Kawasaki H2. You know, from a performance standpoint, from a guy who knows what you know, break that down for us. I mean, are you impressed? When what what, what are you going to do with it when you get a hold of it? <laughs> I'm going to make it faster. <laughs> I know that that sounds crazy, doesn't it? A 300 horsepower. It does. Yeah, bike. you start with a stock bike that is 300 horsepower. What would you do? Well, the first thing that I'm going to do is try to figure out how to use that power because you know Kawasaki has has made a bike that is uh, wow. How can I explain it? I mean, this is this is this is folklore, um, and to be here now. Um, and I'm, I'm, you guys don't think I'm crazy. I mean, I'm getting used to crazy, talking. guys, by the way. Yeah, we don't think you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's fantastic. Um, you know, they're, they're doing something that, you know, I as a performance builder and customizer would, would do on my own. So to have them build this at a factory level is just fantastic. But as a, uh, as, as a performance enthusiast, my job is going to be get those 300 horsepower applied to the racetrack and be able to accelerate as quickly as possible. Um, you know, one of the things that we're going to do, we're going to lower this thing and stretch it and try to actually use that power at the drag strip to go to go quicker than anybody else. And you know, I don't know. You know, I know a lot of the listeners are going to are going to uh, uh, you know uh, uh, appreciate quarter mile times, but I don't see any reason why this bike, without really any change, much in the way it changes, if it really does make 300 horsepower, I mean, it's a seven-second motorcycle, which is stock off showroom floor is amazingly, <laughs> amazingly flat, fast. And you know, from a land speed standpoint, with that kind of power, you know, 200 plus miles an hour, you know, on a on a on a closed course. I mean, that's fantastic. Wow. In the quarter mile. No, no, no. no 200 on a closed mile, course. You're probably looking at something in the in the hundred and in the hundred and seventy mile an hour range in the in the quarter mile, somewhere somewhere between 170 and 180 miles an hour. And somebody like our co-host Bobby Wooldridge could go buy that. 
That's a scary thought. <laughs> yeah. throw, throw a leg over it. Now, Brock, I got to ride. Uh, I'd never been to a drag strip before as, as actually riding one. And, uh, You've been to a lot of drag events, yeah. but not on a motorcycle. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I, I let's not you. talk about how I okay. met Bobby. That's right. Okay. Anyhow, so I was in uh, the strip in Las Vegas, and Brock, you were there that time for that ZX-14 intro. Yes. And... Uh, I mean, I didn't know which Brock you're talking about. You spell your name wrong, by by the way. I can't. Well, it's gonna make it easier. Let's just say I was with Brock with a K. Okay. And uh, it was my first experience ever drag racing. We didn't. Well, we actually we did race, but uh, at a drag strip with a motorcycle in it on the ZX14. You're like the Brock. Brock, Brock come on, Brock, racing. spill the beans. You can be. There's only just a couple of us listening here. Is he terrible or what? How was he? Did he right embarrass himself? Oh no, he does, Paul did a great job. I got second out of all those guys that had really? done it. Yeah, second out of three. And no, like, no, no. There was probably I don't know. There's probably ten of us there or something. But I, I, nice. I, I, I what my bottom line with the story is that. If you ever get the opportunity to go run a bike on a drag strip, you should definitely do it. And we were fortunate enough to have Ricky Gadsden there, who was our teacher. Um, And, and, I mean, he just – he's very good at explaining it, and he made it – it wasn't easy, but he made it a lot easier. But, man, I had a hell of a lot of fun on that that drag bike that day, and it was uh, – What gear did you leave in? Uh, First. Are you in first? I don't don't remember. Probably first. I think first. Street bike first gear is yeah, going and 60, it, and you're just holding the you, you, you never blip the throttle. Well, right? yeah, and it's just, it the whole thing is just the, a lot of it is obviously the launch, yeah, and then it's after that it's not screwing up your shifting points and and missing gears and things like that. But but it it, it and uh, the fact that Paul weighs 145 pounds and the rest of the dealers that he was running suited. against were no no the guys they're were all, 210. They're, they're all little no journalists like me. So anyhow, hey, but, uh, but Brock, when you're working what, with a new guy like Paul, what What's the most common problem that new drag racers encounter? Um, if getting there is over their fear of flipping over backwards is is the is usually the biggest problem, um, followed by trying too hard. And and you know, drag racing is one of these sports where we're we're really dealing in in ten, hundreds of seconds, but tens of seconds for sure. And you just can't. It's important not to make mistakes it, you, because you don't. There's no time. There's no time to catch up. So, um, and like like Paul said, Ricky Gadsden was there. Ricky has a drag racing school, so so Ricky can calm you down. Um, it's obvious Paul knew how to ride a motorcycle. <laughs> it's very helpful. It seems so simplistic, but drag racing is one of those things, and I'm sure Paul can Paul can attest to this. You could, on the surface, it seems pretty simple, right? You go from point A to point B. Yeah, how hard can how, that be? How hard, how hard can it be? Exactly. Um, but when you're fighting against time, you can go up there and do the same thing over and over again. But to, but to make those numbers come down, it's, it gets very challenging. And not knowing what you're doing correctly versus doing it correctly can be a very, very big help. I mean, otherwise, you know, you look at motocross, for instance, why do some guys get whole shots and some guys just can't do it? Um, you need to practice and understand why the bike is truly accelerating versus versus not. Um, and it, there's a technique that, that is involved to get the bike to accelerate without you know coming up too high on a wheelie, coming or uh, and and you know actually moving forward uh, versus you know messing it up. And there are just small little techniques that you can learn over the years. That you know the guys that are good at it versus guys that aren't that allow them to be better than other guys. And I mean, we have we have heroes in our sport. You know, we have our own Valentino Rossi's. You know, Ricky Gatson's sponsored by Kawasaki. We've uh, you know, there's a reason for that. He's good at what he does. But there are other guys around the country that you know you could look them up. You know, Richard Gatson is Ricky's nephew. Uh, he he's a hired gun. People pay him to come and ride motorcycles at the drag strip because he's better at it than other guys, you know, even though it seems like, you know, how hard could it be? We're joined by Brock Davidson on Bike Week Radio Show, and uh, you can check out Brock's uh, website at brocksperformance.com. That's B-R-O-C-K for Brock Davidson. <laughs> and uh, So, Brock, what else? I mean, obviously we talk about drag, drag bikes and uh, making, you know, basically making your sport bike, really, to be much faster and people who want to drag race them on the in in 
you know, amateur competitions most of the time, and all the way obviously up to the pro level too. But if you just want more performance out of your bike, your sport bike, and then obviously carbon wheels. But what else? Um, when, you know, what else are you working on? Land speed record. Uh, you know, who are you working with there? And V twin and V twin stuff. I mean, you know, I know. Is it apples and oranges for you? I mean, you're working on a V twin, and then you're working on this bike. You're talking about a production bike going to go in the seven seconds. It's like. They're, they got to be apples and oranges. Brock, tell them what you and I discussed earlier this week about you going to Sturgis and bringing your backup bike. Tell Brock about that. Old Yamaha team guy might appreciate that story. Well, we had a. Uh, I brought a, a backup bike to Sturgis, and uh, one of the one of the people that was staying with us, his Harley, his Harley um, had a had an issue, so I let him ride my road guide, and my backup bike was a VMAX with carbon fiber wheels. Our exhaust system on it, and um, it makes 200 horsepower at the rear wheel. I mean, this is a this rock's is a cracking solid, up. <laughs> solid nine second, solid nine second low low to mid nine second motorcycle, and uh, you know I'm just running around Sturgis on this thing. It's an animal that sounds like a you know sounds like a, a NASCAR V8. Uh, wonderful bike. Good friend of mine loaned it to me, but you know I'm dry, I'm riding around. And uh sightseeing all on this thing. <laughs> Passing guys on the interstate and you know, just a barely flick of the wrist, this I mean this bike will you know, the speed limits out there are fantastic. You can just pass guys effortlessly and I mean the the heads that were turning was were were just fantastic. But, you know, performance is it doesn't really matter to me. I've always said I, you know, the spelling on the tank doesn't matter. You, you know, performance is performance and whether it's you know, trying to yank your arms out of the socket or, like in the carbon fiber wheel instance, um, making the quality of ride better. You know, we we work with Owens uh, here in the U.S. or in North Carolina, Owens USA. We have a drag suspension that will work on the drag strip. Of course, you know, you may not have your Harley out at the drag strip all of the time. So when you're riding on the street, you also want a decent quality of ride out of the bike also. So we've got suspension that works on the street and the drag strip. Same thing, we've got a whole line of carbon fiber wheels coming, uh, being produced for V-twins that, you know, these are big, heavy motorcycles. They've got, they've got big, heavy wheels. Um, we're going we're gonna to have lighter wheels for the, uh, you know, for the, for the V-twins coming, for street glides, for road glides, for, for those, those kind of bikes, and then also the Dynas. Um, we've got billet. I mean, um, their aluminum swing arms, um, extruded aluminum swing arms coming uh, also for the Dynas. A stock swing arm weighs 25 pounds. These swing arms weigh 12. Wow. Back to the unsprung mass situation. You, you, put a, you put a swing arm on one of these bikes that weighs half what it, what it does OEM, combine that with some lightweight wheels and some performance brakes, and you get, you get a Harley that, you know, handles much, much nicer. The ride's nicer. Um, you know, it, it's, it's all about performance and making the bike perform better, not necessarily go, you know, light speed, but it does perform better. And, you know, our customers are asking for this. This is awesome. That's awesome stuff. So, obviously, you, you touch bases on a lot of different areas, and uh, anybody listening out there want to check out uh, Brock's Performance. That's Brock with a K, brocksperformance.com. You can see all sorts of uh, Fun project that Brock Davidson has, and uh, and also Brock, I, you don't make things for just 200, 200 horsepower motorcycles because you know we get new products and stuff from from your company sent to Cycle News, and we we try to run them as often as we can. But I've seen a lot of products for the Honda Grom, yeah. you know, so it, carbon it just, fiber wheels. For well, right, I mean, it just goes to show that you know that the spectrum of of motorcycles that he actually uh, produces things to make them better goes. Well, from the truth Honda. is, Brock Davidson can't leave anything alone, can you, Brock? No. <laughs> and yeah, from a business you know, standpoint, you got to be pretty happy that Honda produced a motorcycle like the Grom because it's giving you a little, little bit of opportunity. It's begging to, to be modified. Yeah, exactly. I really did. Those are cool motorcycles. And, you know, I looked at it. I went, I went wow, it's fuel-injected. It, it has horsepower, but I know I can make more with it. And, you know, I can make it look better, sound better, handle better. I can make this bike better. And, and that's what I know this how, this is the best, may not be the best business theory in the world, but I can look at a motorcycle, make it better as far as I'm concerned to make me happy, 
And then when I'm finished, if we make those products available to other people, they just seem to love them. So I'm over here just having a ball playing with motorcycles, and surprisingly enough, money follows that. And I mean, if that's not the American dream, I don't know what is. That's awesome. You're living it, buddy. That's awesome. Well, next time I'm up at the Goodyear plant there over in Ak, I got to figure out a way to drive down that way to Dayton and oh, yeah, yeah. Come down we'll check it out. But we're we're maybe. That's Two and, awesome. and a half, three hours. From I'm now. suggesting a Brock and Brock grudge match. How's that? Huh? <laughs> That's right. You can hey, show, show me how to launch it. On Groms. <laughs> as long as we stay on asphalt and then uh, and, and stay off stuff with the uh, with with jumps. Uh, Brock, just, he's my uh, he was one of my high, one of my uh, childhood heroes. I, I watched him in cycling. Mine too. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, it's been wonderful having you on the show, Brock and. Uh, I, I got to watch, pay more attention to your company, and check out all the new products, and uh, get down there and visit you because I uh, very intriguing and anything carbon. Carbon's like the new. It used to be all shiny and chrome on the Harleys, and now it's all going to be black. Carbon, it. it's it, man. It's yeah. awesome. All right, Brock. Well, good having you on there, and uh, we'll catch up with you soon. Thanks, Brock. Thanks for having me, guys. See you, Brock. Thanks again, there, Brock Davidson. Brock'sPerformance.com. Coming up next, Kim Kohlenberger. She is one of the organizers for the Injured Warrior Appreciation Project, or the I-War Ride. Friday, November 7th, they're leaving from O.C. Harley in the morning, Friday morning, and they're riding into Camp Pendleton. Very cool ride. You're going to want to be a part of it. Also, all proceeds goes to those who've been injured for uh, our, in our military. So, win, 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 win for everybody. Eight wins, nine wins, however many angles you can talk about this Nothing story. Win, win for win. everybody. And so we're going to talk to Tim Kohlenberger coming up next right here on Bike Week Radio Show, San Diego Sports Leader, Mighty 1090. For 46 years, Costa Mesa Speedway has been the most exciting, colorful, and unpredictable live-action show ever. From the comfort of grandstand seating, your friends and family will witness top professional speedway motorcycle racing, insane two-man sidecar teams, Harley Hardcores, freestyle motocross, and much more. Check out their entire schedule at CostaMesaSpeedway.net. Costa Mesa Speedway on the Orange County Fairgrounds Saturday nights. Don't miss it. CostaMesaSpeedway.net. Here's an idea. Bear with me. You could save quite a bit of money just by switching your motorcycle insurance to GEICO. Piles of it, in fact. But there may not be a lot of room on your bike for all that extra cash. So I had somewhat of an idea. You could get one of those nifty little sidecars, pile it up with all that money you just saved, and merrily drive on your way. It's just a thought. Just off the top of me head. Call GEICO today for a free motorcycle rate quote. GEICO, saving people money on more than just car insurance. Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys are the real deal. Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys. Their entire practice is dedicated to representing motorcyclists. As riders themselves, they understand why you ride, the issues you face, and the motorcycle culture. For over 30 years, Russ Brown and his partner Chuck Coro have been helping injured motorcyclists and their families get the care and compensation they deserve. Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys also created BAM. BAM! A nationwide buddy system of over 2 million riders helping riders in the event of a roadside emergency. BAM offers free legal advice, and thanks to Russ Brown, they have staff on hand to take your call 24-7, 365 days a year. Imagine a real person answering the phone 24-7. Just call 1-800-4-BIKERS for more information and to get your BAM card today. If you go down, call Russ Brown, 1-800-4-BIKERS, and online at Russ Brown. Brown.com. Hey guys, this is James from Toyota of Escondido. For the heavy duty truck that you need for work or play, shop right here at Toyota of Escondido. Come down and check out the new 2013 Toyota Tacoma or the 2013 Toyota Tundra. We've got the perfect vehicle to fit your active lifestyle with most vehicles at 0% on approved credit. Stop by, give us a call, or visit us online at the only place for big time trucks, ToyotaEscondido.com. Freeway close where Highway 78 meets Broadway, just east of the 15. For 46 years, Costa Mesa Speedway has been the most exciting, colorful, and unpredictable live action show ever. From the comfort of grandstand seating, your friends and family will witness top professional speedway motorcycle racing, insane two-man sidecar teams, Harley Hardcores, freestyle motocross, and much more. Check out their entire schedule at CostaMesaSpeedway.net. Costa Mesa Speedway on the Orange County Fairgrounds Saturday nights. Don't miss it. CostaMesaSpeedway.net. 
This is Bike Week Radio Show with Bobby Wooldridge, Brock Glover, and Paul Carruthers on San Diego's sports leader, the mighty 1090. Welcome back. Final segment, Bike Week Radio Show, San Diego sports leader, mighty 1090. Let's head out to the hotline right now. Kim Kohlenberger, she's part of the organizing group that puts together the Injured Warrior Appreciation Project Ride, or IWAR Ride. If you want to check out the website, it's InjuredWarriorRide.com. Kim, good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us, and tell us a little bit about this ride. And, uh, of course, huge shout-out to Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys who put us in contact. Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys is going to be part of this ride, as is Bike Week Radio Show. And Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys are giving away three spots in this ride. I'll tell you at the end of the interview how you can be a part of it. But, Kim, fill us in on the details of this. All right. Um, thank you so much for having me on the show this morning. Really appreciate it. And thanks to Russ, Russ Brown for setting this up. Absolutely. Um, golly, it's it's such an exciting event. We're so thrilled to be able to support our injured warriors. We have created this motorcycle ride a couple of years ago because we wanted to em, embrace a charity through our Orange County Harley Davidson dealership and our Orange Coast Hog chapter. Um, basically, it's a motorcycle charity ride. All motorcycles are welcome. It benefits our military men and women who have so bravely served and sacrificed for our country. And 100% of your registration goes to our chosen charity of Warrior Foundation Freedom Station. So we don't have any money that we're skimming off the top or administrative costs. 100% helps our injured warriors. And the Warrior Foundation Freedom Station assists four main groups of warriors in a variety of ways, providing them with quality of life items, education opportunities, job training opportunities, and numerous other support services designed to assist them and their families during their recovery. So you just go to our website, sign up. You uh, will, we will, we will ride from the Orange County Harley Davidson dealership on the morning of November 7th, all the way down to Camp Pendleton. We we literally ride a good 21 miles through Camp Pendleton, and we end up at the Hope and Care Center facility right there next to the Wounded Warrior Battalion West on the base and we have lunch with our injured warriors very very cool and um how many people are you guys expecting to be a part of this ride uh well as of right now we have over 800 people signed up and um last year we um ended up with about 1100 people um on the day of the ride it it was absolutely amazing now this ride is fully escorted so we have a motorcade protective services um, motorcade taking us down the five freeway to our exit off the five freeway and onto the base, and then we are escorted all the way through the base. So safety is, you know, imperative um, for part of this ride. And um, motorcade protective services is a, is a is a great group that helps us get all those bikes down the five freeway safely. And how many years have you guys been doing the ride? This is our third year, actually. Fantastic, and uh, I can't imagine 1,100 people on bikes. That's quite a ride. It's, it's a That's small a good army. group. It's a small army is what it is. It is, and you know, when we first started this ride with, with the Orange Coast Hog Chapter, we never really imagined that it would grow to the point it has grown to in, in so few years. You know, our first year, we thought, okay, you know, maybe we'll get about 150 bikes, and we ended up with over 300 and then the next year we doubled those numbers, and now this year we're, you know, getting even larger. So um, we're very excited. And, you know, it's, it's amazing to see all the great Americans out there that are supporting our troops. And, gosh, it just it just gives you a real good feeling to be on the ride. It pulls at your heartstrings, very emotional, and um, and for such a wonderful cause. Kim, how did you become involved in this event? Well, actually, um, I'm a member of the Orange Coast Hog Chapter, and in 2011, I became the director of the Hog Chapter. And with that said, um, one thing I learned years ago was that you want to leave something behind before you check out. So I wrapped my head around something that I could leave behind when I stepped down as director of the Hog Chapter that the Orange Coast Hog Group could you know, embrace and support for years to come. And I just had this little spark of an idea um, to come up with a charity. You know, I 
I know that we have lots of great groups out there that support our fallen heroes and focus on our veterans during Memorial and Veterans Day weekends. And after doing some research, I discovered that um, veterans from all wars are dying um, of about a rate of 22 per day um, because of suicide. And TP, PTSD and TBI are absolutely treatable illnesses. So I realized that there was one group of our warriors that were not being supported, and those were the injured warriors. And with that said, I thought, okay, let's develop a ride that's going to support our injured warriors. And I did more research down the local 5013C3 charity, the um, Warrior Foundation Freedom Station, that supports our injured warriors at the base of Camp Pendleton as well as 29 Palms. San Diego, Balboa Naval Station, and and over, even over in Hawaii. And when I found out that 100% of those proceeds finds its way to the Warriors instead of being spent on administrative costs, I knew that that was the ticket. Well, Kim, thank you so much again for joining us. We can't wait to be a part of this ride. Friday, November 7th, leaving from Orange County, Harley-Davidson, in the morning registration, 7.30 to 9.30 a.m. Kim, thank you again. Absolutely, and thank you so much. Appreciate your support. And if you want to be a part of the ride, InjuredWarriorRide.com is the website, or our good friends at Rust Brown Motorcycle Attorneys are giving away three spots to be a part of this ride. All you have to do is sign up to be a BAM member at Rust Brown Motorcycle Attorney, and then send a picture of you on your bike to BAM at RustBrown.com. Again, BAM at RustBrown.com, and they can be pulling out three winners for you to be part of this ride for free so hey should be a fantastic event can't yeah i think we need to we need to get the bike week radio crew on that ride there and bobby i think that would be instead of a small army i think it'd be a small battalion we're going to camp pendleton Marine. that's right that's right all right so I'm why don't why, Brock, I don't know these why don't why don't we become part of that battalion i like the there you go. i like it though all right thank you guys again for for being a part of the show if you missed any of it head to bikeweekradioshow.com or check out the podcast on itunes We'll be back next Sunday right here on San Diego Sports Leader, the Mighty 1090. You've been listening to Bike Week Radio Show. Powered by Geico. 15 minutes can save you 15% or more on motorcycle insurance. Join us next week for more Bike Week Radio.